The information shared on the Sky Women's Health podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding your medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you heard on this podcast. Reliance on any information provided by Sky Women's Health, Dr. Carolyn Moyers, or any guests featured on the podcast is solely at your own risk. You're listening to Sky Women's Health Podcast, your evidence-based resource for women's health and wellness, exploring the holistic principles of osteopathy, integrating mind, body, and spirit, designed to empower you as your own healthcare advocate and help you live your best life. I'm your host, board-certified OBGYN, Dr. Carolyn Moyers. Hi, friends, and welcome back to Sky Women's Health Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Carolyn Moyers, board-certified OBGYN, menopause certified provider, and Ishwish Fellow. I'm the founder of Sky Women's Health, where we do a whole woman approach, especially in perimenopause and menopause transition. Today, we're diving into new research published in April of 2025 issue of Obstetrics and Gynecology. This study looks at long-term cardiovascular effects of hormone therapy in women who participated in the Women's Health Initiative clinical trials. So this is kind of neat that we keep going back and looking at data, combing the data from this study. So what does it mean for us in real life practice? Should we be concerned about heart health if you're on hormone therapy? Let's break it down. This study analyzed long-term changes in cardiovascular biomarkers, things like LDL or bad cholesterol, HDL or good cholesterol. I'm doing air quotes for those of you who can't see me. our total cholesterol levels, glucose, insulin, lipoprotein A, and more. And women randomized to hormone therapy during the original Women's Health Initiative trials. The two hormone therapy regimens studied were conjugated equine estrogen alone and conjugated equine estrogen plus medroxyprogesterone acetate for those who had a uterus. Here's the headline. Women who were randomized to hormone therapy, either conjugated equine estrogen alone or conjugated equine estrogen plus medroxyprogesterone, showed relatively favorable long-term changes in most cardiovascular markers. What? (laughs) Right? (laughs) Am I speaking a different language here? So basically, those who were in the estrogen arm and the estrogen plus progesterone arm both had improvement in their LDL was lower, that bad cholesterol, quote, unquote, higher HDL. So their good cholesterol got better, decreased total cholesterol, decreased insulin resistance and glucose levels, lower levels of fibrinogen, a clotting factor that can increase cardiovascular risk. However, and probably very important for us to note, triglycerides did increase with both hormone therapy regimens. And that's one piece of the puzzle we'll come back to. So what are our clinical takeaways from this? What does it mean for us in clinic when we're um, looking at hormone therapy options? Basically, hormone therapy isn't the heart risk villain that we once thought it might be, uh, or it was once made out to be rather. These biomarker changes suggest that hormone therapy may actually be more cardio-friendly, cardioprotective in the long term than once thought especially for women who start hormone therapy closer to menopause and that that timing hypothesis that you've heard us discuss often. The age of initiation probably matters. In past research, and again in this study, it supports it indirectly, suggesting that hormone therapy may carry more cardiovascular risk for women who start it later, more than 10 years postmenopausal. And this aligns with what we call the timing hypothesis. It's that window of opportunity where hormone therapy is not only safer, but but possibly beneficial for cardiovascular health. Now, does that mean that if somebody is 65 and wanting to start hormone therapy, that they're not a candidate? No, it really depends on how old they were when they had their final menstrual period. What are their overall health risks? Did they ever use hormone therapy? Because sometimes patients may have used hormone therapy for four or five years and come off and found that they really are suffering and they've been, you know, five or six years without hormone therapy and they're just desperate and wanting to get back on. Those are patients that may be a great candidate to restart their hormone therapy. 
So what about this triglycerides being increased? We know that high triglycerides are an independent risk factor for heart disease. So in women who already have elevated triglycerides or metabolic syndrome, we may need to monitor more closely or consider transdermal options, transdermal estrogen options that is what we're what I'm referring to there, so that we avoid increasing clotting risk um, and tend to have less impact on triglycerides as well. What about symptoms? Interestingly, the study also looked at whether the severity of vasomotor symptoms like hot flushes affected cardiovascular biomarkers. And guess what? The markers did not differ based on symptom severity in either hormone therapy group. And that's key because we know from other research that severe vasomotor symptoms have been associated with increased cardiovascular risk. But this study suggests that hormone therapy's effects on cardiovascular markers aren't necessarily tied to how intense your heart flashes are. As with all research, we have to consider limitations, and there are limitations to this study. These are post hoc analysis, which means that they weren't part of the original study design. This is not exactly what they were looking for. This is we're evaluating the data after the fact. The original Women's Health Initiative enrolled women ages 50 to 79, with the average age being around 63, many of whom were well past that menopause transition. So again, the risk may look very different for women starting hormone therapy later in life versus earlier. And while biomarker gives us clues, they aren't the same as actual cardiovascular outcomes like heart attacks or strokes. We still need more long-term follow-up data to really make that full connection to understand that better. So there are questions that remain. The study opens the door for more nuanced conversations, but also leaves some questions unanswered. Um, how do different routes and formulations like transdermal estradiol or micronized progesterone actually affect cardiovascular markers? Because remember, in the Women's Health Initiative, we only looked at one dose, one route, one formulation, of estrogen and progesterone. So, and often these aren't the drugs that I'm using. We, these aren't the hormones that I'm replacing. Typically I'm using bioidentical FDA approved medications such as estradiol and micronized progesterone. So how do those affect uh, cardiovascular markers? Is it the same? Is all estrogen and progesterone the same? We don't know. Can hormone therapy actually be used preventatively for heart disease in certain populations? And how do we balance cardiovascular benefits with other risks like breast cancer or, or blood clot based on individual profiles? These are questions that, you know, as a clinician, I'm, I'm considering um, and research is still out. At Sky Women's Health, this is really approach we take for hormone therapy, you know, thoughtfully, personally, really customizing your therapy for women who are healthy within 10 years of menopause and struggling with symptoms, hormone therapy is safe, effective, and possibly even cardioprotective. But just because you're 10 years beyond menopause does not mean it's an absolute no, it's a nuanced conversation. It's never one size fits all. So we have to take into account your, your full health picture, family history, and preferences, and monitor your labs regularly to ensure you know we're on the right track. So I think that sometimes patients come in expecting a very quick fix, and oftentimes it's we're getting labs, we're getting imaging before we're sitting down to have a really holistic conversation about what might be the right therapy options for you and why, because we want to make sure that we're addressing your whole health while also impacting your heart health, and your quality of life. If you found this episode helpful, please share it with a friend. Leave us a review. It helps other women find empowering evidence-based care. And as always, you can follow me on Instagram at Dr. Carolyn Moyers or visit us at skywomenshealth.com. Until next time, be well.